We had a wonderful sycamore meeting on Thursday night. Lots of you were there. Um, three tables, great food, lots of new people, many of your friends from, in fact, every religious background under the sun. It was fascinating. And we have some innovations this year. Fresh cut flowers on the table. Classical music as people enter. It's very classy and it seemed to create a lovely atmosphere. Um, one of the questions for discussion on Thursday was this one. Quote, If you were God, what would you do to convince people that you existed? Just to let that hang there. Mull that over. If you were God, what would you do to convince people that you existed. And you can imagine the great discussion we had and all the, the crazy ideas from the sublime to the ridiculous. So let me put now, in the light of this Gospel reading, a slightly different question. If you were God, with infinite power at your disposal, what would you do to deal with sickness, suffering, loneliness, exclusion? You could do anything. What would you do? Well, you can guess why I'm asking. The leper in the Gospel today is a real person. This is a real encounter in the streets of Galilee, faithfully recorded by St Mark. But the encounter symbolises something much bigger. It shows us one of the ways that Jesus, in his infinite mercy and power, decides to respond to sickness and suffering. It's not the only way. It's maybe not the way you would have chosen. That's why I asked the question. But it's one way, and it's important. Just to notice what happens here. First, Jesus doesn't jump in. Yeah. My answer, if I were God, is I would get rid of it all immediately. Right? Jesus, he doesn't jump in. He waits for the leper to come to him. He respects his freedom. He waits for his faith. And notice what actually happens. The leper comes to Jesus, takes a step, then he kneels. Humility, worship. And then he speaks and puts his request into words. This takes time and faith and trust and, and Jesus lets it happen. He waits. We would like Jesus often to do things for us and just to do them. But sometimes with us as well. He waits and he's waiting for us to approach him, to kneel humbly and to ask. To put it into words. Second thing you notice is that Jesus is moved with compassion, with pity. Don't forget this detail. To expand from the leper to ourselves and to you, Jesus cares about you. Simple English word. He cares. He hasn't forgotten you. He cares about you, your family, your worries, your friends. He cares not because you are special, but he cares about every single person on this earth and especially the sick and the suffering. He cares because of his infinite, eternal, divine heart. And he cares because of his human heart, his sacred heart, that feels love and pity and compassion just as yours does. Even more so because it doesn't have that protective layer of selfishness that we can grow around our own hearts. His heart is completely exposed to the joy and the love and the suffering and the needs of others. And then in the Gospel, Jesus, lovely detail, stretches out his hand, touches the leper and speaks to him, saying, This is my desire. Be healed. This is what I wish. This is what I wish. This is what I desire. And he touches him. All of this, I, I spend some time on it because it's much more than a single encounter. This is our Christian faith. 
It's actually what makes Christianity so distinctive. And in fact, I had to give a talk a few days ago to some teachers from IOE, from UCL, and I framed the whole of our Christian faith in terms of this core idea. What makes our Christian faith so unique that God has stretched out his hand to us? That he's actually come to be with us in Jesus Christ? That he's touched us and we can touch him. As St. John says in his first letter, quote, We declare to you what was from the beginning, something we have heard, something we have seen with our eyes, that we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. He speaks to us, he touches us, his words of healing, his teaching, the friendship he offers us. And do you see how this way of relating, this God, this pattern, this theology, expands through the whole Bible and through the whole Christian history? When I was speaking to these teachers last week, I used a single word to sum up this incredible, beautiful vision of God. Christianity and of Catholic theology. The word was sacramental. Sacramental. That God makes himself visible and present in our lives. The simplest definition of a sacrament, if some of you pull out your old catechisms, is this. A sacrament is a visible sign of invisible grace. You've heard that before. A visible sign of invisible grace. But to be a bit more technical and specific, that the sacraments are sacred signs through which Christ gives his divine life to us. Do you see that? Sacred signs through which he actually touches and changes us through these signs. To use the technical language, they're efficacious. And through them we don't just receive something, we worship God. He shows his love to us. And his work of sanctification, of making us holy, is carried out. So there's this big poster word, sacramental. Do you notice how rich it is? Because in one sense, you could say that Jesus himself is the sacrament of God. He is God made man, the word made flesh, God with us. Interesting idea, isn't it? Jesus is the sacrament of God. In another sense, theologians have said that the church itself is the first sacrament. Through the church, in so many different ways, we hear his voice and we see his face. And we know and, and believe and understand that very much as Catholics, don't we? That, that we live our faith in and through the gift of the church. But above all, we meet this sacramental God in the seven sacraments themselves. Okay. Come on, let me make you nervous. One by one, you're going to stand up and I'm going to get you to list the seven sacraments and test you. How many of you can do it? Come on, wave at me. Sister Mary's waving at me from the back row. That's good. Thank God. <laughs> right. Look, I'll just do this in brackets because I struggle. We all forget. We hate lists, yes? Just, th just remember this. Three plus two plus two. 3 plus 2 plus 2. 3 sacraments of initiation. Baptism, Confirmation, Eucharist. 2 sacraments of vocation or service. Marriage and priesthood. 2 sacraments of healing and restoration. Confession and the anointing of the sick. Okay, you heard it from me. That will help you. Three sacraments of initiation, two of vocation and service, two of healing and restoration. Close brackets. I'm going to test you over coffee. <laughs> right. 
If only we could appreciate the sacraments more. That's where I wanted to get to. From the gospel to the sacraments. All of them. And if only we could see that in each sacrament, each of these seven sacraments, in different ways, the meeting of Jesus and the leper is taking place. The great danger for us, especially as practicing Catholics, funnily enough, that we forget about the sacraments as something alive and life-giving. We can see them. Because we have the good habit of coming to the sacraments, we can see them, maybe, as just external rituals that don't actually touch us personally. We can, all of us, priests included, go through the motions, go on to autopilot, even the feeling of jumping through hoops sometimes. And for us to see that the sacraments, like this encounter with the leopard, with the leper, are real and personal and powerful. Real because Jesus Christ is truly present in different ways in each sacrament standing here before us. Personal because he's here for you and for me, longing to meet you and touch you in a personal and intimate way. And powerful because if we believe this, if the power of the sacraments can be released in a new way and they can become effective in a way that this power, if we don't really believe this, can become dormant. The technical language for this is that a sacrament can be valid, it is a true sacrament, the grace is given, it can be valid but not fruitful. If you've learned that before. And it's again very technical, maybe you don't need it, but actually it's a beautiful truth to have at the back of your mind because it reminds you that the more alive your faith can be, the more you come to church on Sunday, the more you come to confession with, with an open heart, believing and praying and reaching out and kneeling down in humility like the leper and putting your desires and prayers into words. The more your faith is real and alive, the more powerfully the sacraments and the sacramental grace can touch you. And then, this is the last bit of the gospel, you can become who you are meant to be. The leper is freed. He goes back to his family and friends. He goes to his town. The exclusion he experienced disappears. He belongs. But he doesn't just go back. He goes back full of this good news of what has happened to him. He's transformed and his life transforms those he meets. I've got this final image in my mind and it's because of Friday night so, so we had the masked carnival yeah? this was our early Shrove Tuesday lots of you were there and there were some great masks there were some great people taking on the identities that they've longed to have all their life yeah? there, was, there was Batman there was Yoda there was a certain um, clerical Spider-Man um, <laughs> Some people, they had beautiful, not the kind of mask that hides you, but the kind of mask that enhances you. You know, beautiful um, Venetian lace masks. And one person, and it, it made me laugh and broke my heart at the same time, came with a paper bag over her head. <laughs> yeah? With two holes cut out. Um, she shall remain nameless. <laughs> And it broke my heart because it reminded me of reading the Charlie Brown, the Snoopy books when I was little. Yeah? That Charlie Brown would put a paper bag over his head when he went on his summer camp because he was so embarrassed to be himself. Yeah? And so with the gospel and with the sacraments, one part of me wants to say this is about taking the mask off. You don't need a mask. You just need to be your true self. 
a beloved, chosen, loved son and daughter of the Father, a brother, a sister of Christ. You don't need to wear a mask and this is what the leper experiences today, the freedom that comes from meeting Christ. But another part of me, and maybe this is another sermon, would like to say no, we do need to, as St Paul says, put on Christ Jesus. <coughs> to put on Christ Jesus. To be ourselves, but to be the, the, the beautiful self that is lifted up and transformed. In one sense, a new self, a deeper self, a more real self. So that we show not just our own face to the world, but the face of Jesus Christ shining through us. That's what the leper experiences today. And it's what we are invited to experience whenever we celebrate the sacraments.